run through that for us? Tell us what that uh, so I was supposed to wrap around to the opposite A or over the ball. Um, but they were using that protection a lot that night. And they, you know, they officers say certain things. Um, so they said something. Um, and I kind of acted like I was going over there and then shot back out to where there was no one there. Came through, just had to wrap up because I missed them early on in the game. Um, yeah, but that's really it. Just listening to the offense, playing the game, and then just, you know, finding little nuances that help you win. How satisfying was it to get your first NFL sack on a play like that? It was dope. It was dope, but I should have had one earlier. So you know, I was, I was mad about that one, um, and uh, you know, I didn't realize that when I hit him, how slippery he was, and uh, <laughs> so that's why I tackled him like that the, the last time to ensure I didn't miss it. Are you getting a sense of what the whole vibe of Browns football could be? Fans, team, uh, success. Uh, absolutely. You know, I've I've had those vibes since I got here. You know, we know it's a football town. You know, we just got to start winning. You know, now that we're finally getting the ball rolling, you know, giving the fans something to actually be excited about, you know, it's definitely a good time. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, that play, the sack, mm -hmm. I mean, it's fourth down, and it's really the game. Yep. Are you thinking sack? Absolutely. Um, once, once they brought the tight end down, and, you know, I saw Case, and the line didn't account for me, and Case thought I was in man coverage. Um, once they slid the protection away from me, um, I knew it was going to be a sack. I just had to beat him before he got the ball out. But the low snap helped us. You know, I, I don't, I don't even think he saw me until it was too late. And uh, yeah, it's ball game. So did you get that from film study that you knew that? that oh, absolutely, was... absolutely. So have you absolutely. always been a film study guy? Or... Well, not to this degree. Um, you know, last year it was more, you know, trying to learn the defense and you know, trying not to mess up. Uh, <laughs> But now, now I fully understand the defense, why, why Greg calls what he calls in certain situations. It, it allows you to study things that you, know, you wouldn't study if you didn't know those things, such as protections, um, what they like to do with the back, um, his depth, where he lines up, um, you know, just things like that it definitely make you a better player. Greg, talk about it. What has Greg done best to get the most out of you guys? Uh, we just practice real game situations competitively now instead of having the game be the first time that situation arises. Um, you know, so for instance, let's say it's a two minute drive, you know, it's, instead of the game being that first time our offense goes into two minute mode, we do it in practice, you know, competitive. Um, you know, we're the ultimate competitors here, so we, we all want to win that period, both offensively and defensively. So, you know, I think that's been the main thing that uh, you know that he's bought that uh, helps us win. So when he took over six weeks ago, I don't think a lot of people thought about potentially that he could be the guy going forward. Mm -hmm. Do you think would that be fine with you? I mean, did you ever consider that he could be your full-time coach going um, forward? Um, you know, in this league, you never really know. You know, I love coach to death, um, but you know, it's, this league is a business. You know, but I do know I'm gonna, you know play as hard as I can for him and squeeze out as much wins as we can. Um, you know, that's our mindset. We got an AFC rival coming up this weekend. That's where all our attentions are. Would you like to see him be given the job? I mean, you know, I love Coach. You know, I love to see that. But at the end of the day, you know, that's not my call. It's a business league. Um, just got to go out there and act accordingly. Do you guys feel like uh, you'll have the same intensity for this game, the same motivation that you had the last few weeks, even though the playoffs really are for the most part, out of reach. Absolutely. It's an AFC, it's an AFC t uh, North rivalry right here, um, especially how things went up there last week. Um, you know, we definitely want to make let them know that, yeah, it's, it wasn't just a, a fluke. You know, we going this this what it's going to be. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we know they're going to give everything they have. You know, they just coming off a great win over a team that beat us. Um, but, you know, we got to come in and do what we do best, stop the run, play sound, discipline football. Hey, I, I've watched you, uh, like when, when the kickoff goes over your head and you don't get a chance to return, you're very you punts when you have to call a fair catch. Mm -hmm. you, have you been waiting for what happened on Saturday night? Uh, yeah, and I still, you know, left a lot of plays out there in the special team, special team wise. Um, you know, that kick return, when I slipped, I had a huge lane up the middle. And a punt, if I just stay outside, you know, give, give the guy a stiff arm, who knows. Yeah. Uh, should have fair caught the first punt. But, you know, I just try to be aggressive. You know, uh, I've, I've been aggressive 
uh, you know, the past couple weeks in the return game. So I was just trying to be aggressive, see if I could break the, make the first guy miss, and then you know, get get some yards however I can, help the offense out. Craig's talked about his aggressive personality. We've seen it in, in the play calling on both sides of the ball. But um, <clears throat> do you think that this team's kind of taken on his personality a little bit over these last six games? I just think that we just know how it feels to be at the bottom. And, you know, we know we're a talented group. And we know that we can win ball games if we put it all together. Um, he trusts us. We trust him. Yeah, and, you know, we just go yeah, out there and just try to play hard for him. Um, you know, we, 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 we all are aggressive. Um, it's just the way he calls the game, he gives the players and lets the players know that he trusts us the way he calls the game, and that makes you want to play hard for him. We saw the two big plays. We saw the two big plays Saturday. Do you feel like the season's been building that for you? That you've been playing much better this year than you did last year? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think this was the first game that you know was really a stat, you know, kind of filler game for me. Um, you know, because all the other games I kind of do all the you know setting the edges and. You know, try to make a couple splash plays when when I can, but uh, this time you know it was a lot of opportunity to make big plays for me, and uh, you know I didn't capitalize on all of them, but I capitalized on most of them. So, you know, it was a good feeling. You know, I left a lot of plays out there. Just gotta keep building on it. And on that pick, did you know that you were gonna get there in time? I mean, it's a long way to go. To um, there. it's just about reading the quarterback, reading that 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 front tip, that front shoulder. Um. You know, I I, I saw him communicating with the receivers pre-snap, so I kind of pretty had a. I did the ball was going over there, but I didn't want to guess and then leave the ex, uh, you know, our backside corner exposed. Um, but once he didn't come off of it, you know, I just trusted my gut, you know, sped up and tried to hop on the ball. <laughs> Jibril, I know that you're just thinking Cincinnati and next week it'll be Baltimore, but doesn't this kind of uh, give you some excitement about what next year and the future could be? Absolutely, here? absolutely. You know, but we got to finish this year out strong. Uh, got Cincy this week. That's our main focus right now. Pull out another. Pull out another W. How much of a goal or a motivating factor is to have a winning season for the first time? Oh, it's definitely that's definitely a motivating factor. Um, you know, and that's and that's actually my goal. Um, you know, even if because the playoffs are that's something we can't control. A lot of stuff has to happen that we can't control. Having a winning record, that's something we can't control. Um, and you know, that's 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 been my main focus. That's when I. You know, whatever. if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it doesn't. It gives us the stepping stools to go into next year. When, when you, I assume you heard that it would take a Titans Colts tie for you guys to get in, along with some other things. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I haven't really heard the actual scenarios. I just know things have to happen that we can't control. So you know, that's that's all I need to hear, pretty much. For me, I'm not gonna get too get too far into the what ifs. You guys played in Cincinnati last time. Hugh Jackson was an issue. For some of your teammates, and then Baker followed up with the fake statement on Instagram. Is it an issue for you? Do you have any feelings on him? Uh, you know, I love Coach Hugh. Uh, you know, he's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, but the one thing about Coach is he's the ultimate competitor. You know, it's a it's a business league. Um, you know, and as a rookie, you know, when you come from a, a, a good school that has a good foundation of brotherhood and, you know, things like that, and you kind of want to bleed it over into the NFL, which sometimes you can. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a business. You know, you can't really get your feelings too involved or too hurt or feel any any way about anything. Um, you know, but he's the ultimate competitor. I knew he wasn't gonna stay away from the game long. Um, you know, I, it, I know how it looked, but you know, he's the ultimate competitor. He just wanted to be, you know, a part of the game. And when the opportunity arises, you know, he couldn't turn it down. So, you know, I have no ill will towards him. I'm thankful for everything he taught me. Thankful that he brought me here, and uh, but you know, still looking forward to kicking his ass again. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, respect to uh, the fact that there, it takes more than a quarterback to uh, lead a team uh, out of obscurity, and Williams was talking about this. Uh, you know, he said Schobert's a good quarterback for the defense, and even used your name yep. to say that uh, a complicated read that Mayfield had to make on one play. He described one of your plays where your read was just as complicated and involved the same thing. Yep. The question is about Mayfield. And how important is it to have a, a guy who's uh, elite at that mm -hmm. position? Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, super beneficial. Um, as a defender, you know that, you know, if we were to give up a big play here or, you know, give up a cheap touchdown, 
we know Baker has the ability to go get some of those points back for us. Um, you know, worst case scenario, a field goal. You know, we know he's going to take chances, and we want him to do that. You know, as a defense with a young quarterback, we know um, that we have to play well, you know, protect him, get him the shortest field as possible, because we know he's going to do something with it. And when we don't, you know, he still does something with it. So, you know, we want to make it as easy as possible on him. Um, because you know we know he can win a lot of ball games for us. You know, he's so. going to have to prove he's uh, as good as absolutely than, uh, some of the good guys. Absolutely, in the absolutely. But it, it it seems right now that uh, he's different in his style and yep. his approach. What, what makes him yeah. different? That's he's just him, man. He's not a cookie cutter quarterback. You know, everyone's everyone's their own person. You know, some people don't like it, some people embrace it. You know, we love it, um, and then you know that's that's our attitude anyway. Um, you know, it's just that's 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 what we needed. And, you know, we're going we gonna to rally behind him, you know, in these last couple games and try to finish this thing off right. You would say you're not a cookie-cutter safety? Um, I mean, I just believe I'm my own person. You know, I'm not really – you know, I try to take certain things from other guys' games, but, you know, I don't really care, you know, about, you know, I guess a lot of the stuff that people would think I do. Um, but, you know. I'm just my own, my own guy. And what did you think about uh, Kobe Bryant talking to you guys? And what were your main takeaways from that? Oh, man, that was, that was probably one of the dopest moments, you know, since I've been in the league. Um, you know, it's just the way he could command the room when he talks. You know, you just have no choice but to listen. And then just, you know, the comfort level. Um, you know, when you think you know a guy, then you find out how that person really actually is. You know, it was just, it was just a good experience, man, and his message he conveyed it the right way, and it really hit home with me. Um, and, you know, it gave me that extra little oomph what I needed for prime time. So, you know, I was definitely thankful for that. You guys, what did you hit home? It's just it's too many points. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to give away any of his little secrets. Um, but uh, it, it, it was definitely, it was definitely, you know, a, a lot of things that he said. But I guess I, I, I'll give away one. Um, you know, he always said that he felt it was selfish when guys wouldn't shoot the open shot because of fear of what everyone else would think about them. Uh, and he was like, me, I'm going to shoot the open shot every time. I, I, you know, I don't care. We saw that, you know, but, you know, just his mindset on things. You know, a lot of people think that he was a ball hog and, you know, all this and that. But when you open, shoot it. You know, why, why, why wouldn't you shoot it? Why are you scared to pull the trigger? You know, and I just took away from that was, you know, you can't be scared to pull the trigger for where everybody else is going to think about you. You know, be you play the best way you can play, good things are going to happen for you. So, you know, that's probably one of the main takeaways. It's a lot of takeaways, but, you know, that's the main did, takeaway. Did you know that? I mean, did you get a sense? Or how did that work out? Did Greg just had got somebody? Well, he just said we're going to have a guest speaker. Uh -huh. So, you know, and uh, he was kind of toying with us because last time we had a guest speaker, he talked for an hour. Uh, and that was supposed to be an hour that we had to ourselves. So, you know, we were like, come on, man. And then when Kobe Bryant walked in the building, it's like, okay, all right, you know, but I get it. I get it so now. You so, shocked, yeah. surprised, and I mean, it was like a lot of mixed emotions, but, uh, you know, it was dope. That was dope. You got to meet uh, Jordan at Michigan, didn't you? Yeah. So, like, did you ever think that you'd get to meet both those guys? Nah, man, that's crazy. You know, I actually got to meet all three. So, you know, it was definitely, definitely a good experience. You guys got with everybody? Uh, I know, I know some of the guys did, but it, it it really wasn't about that. I was just more so listening to his message and his words. What was the reaction when he walked in the room? It was definitely a lot of applause. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was a business trip. You know, we didn't want to, you know, get too googly eyed. But <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, I know, I know. Who you telling? But uh, you know, it was definitely dope. Really when you talked about the increased trust factor since Greg's taken over, mm -hmm. and he talks about this belief that you guys have now, why do you think that changed? I mean, you know, you had all kinds of distractions the first eight weeks, and the coaching changed. Why do you think that kind of clicked for you guys? I mean, that's a good question. I just think it was just, you know, more attention to detail. Um, and just, you know, us in the locker room just not letting all the outside – you know, elements affect us and affect how we play. You know, it, it, it would have been easy to, you know, crumble and blame everything else that's going on. But, you know, we stuck together, you know, fought it out. And, uh, you know, we on the cusp of, you know, having the first win, first uh, winning season here in a long time. So, um, you know, 
everything falls how it may, man. You can't write the story. You just got to do your part in it. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. Think about it, you weren't even born the last time they beat the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of crazy? <laughs> yeah, it is.